Hey guys, it is July the 21st, another fun day in these markets. Um, let's take a look at what's going on here in the middle of earnings season, which it really is coming out mixed, guys. I can't even, like anyone that's trying to pretend like, and I've seen some head headlines pretend like earnings coming out better than expected. Yeah, like I said, I don't do earnings relative to what the street says, because that does not consider half the time that the street has so chopped their estimates in half that it doesn't even make sense. Instead, I look at the numbers, I see if the company's still growing or if it's not growing and also it's getting margin compression. And I make a call as to whether it is a good or a bad earnings season overall. And then I layer in my stock opinion on top. That is not how a lot of the street does it. And that kind of just is what it is. But let's talk about what it is I'm seeing today. These indices have been dancing and let's just double check. Um, these indices have been dancing around zero with NASDAQ up a lot. And I got to tell you, if you look at this heat map, it's very clear that it's really Tesla driving things upwards with the Qs. And that is because Tesla is a top five, I believe now, component. Um, and it's really fascinating because it's a testament to how well Tesla, despite being down from its highs, has hung in there because it was at one point well over $1,000 and how much the others have lost their positioning. Well, not Google, Microsoft, um, Apple, but some of the other contenders that would have like made more of an impact, how much they've lost um, market cap and so therefore less of a percentage of the S&P 500. Um, or the Qs, actually it's really the Qs that we're talking about. The S&P 500 is acting like what the screen looks like. Energy, absolutely getting brutalized today. I'm gonna to go through that. Um, and I'm also gonna go through a couple of names, obviously Tesla and a few others that I'm seeing earnings reports on today. But to start us off, uh, initial jobless claims are, did come in worse than expected. So you had about 7,000 new, it's the first time it's ticked up, meaning like we've got more claims, people claiming unemployment. And so that's a little bit negative after a sea of positive. Next week we have the FOMC. So this VIX that refuses to go upwards and this market that wants to go into a bull market, we said most of this week we expect a bull market. Um, I would not carry that sentiment in the next week because the FOMC meeting is a real, I don't know what to think about it because Europe, every single company has come out and said that the reason they might lower guidance or the reason they're not raising guidance or the reason that they have um, no guidance, anything related to possibilities of negatives is they cannot gauge what's going on in Europe. And in all cases, most of them are saying Europe's mess. It's really not a better way to say it. Now I wanted to show you all of the earnings that came out today, it's probably why I'm a little dizzy from all of them, quite frankly. But um, you've got kind of a mix here. The airlines got clobbered. In fairness, those were strong reports, especially United had a great report. So the fact that it's getting clobbered, I'm probably going to let it settle and then find a way to get long exposure. I will probably short vol to, to receive it. Um, but um, I wouldn't necessarily touch it today, but my bias is up. I would not continue leaning in. Even if it goes down, I may be proven wrong because the day traders do whatever they want. But this was not a bad earnings report at all. Um, they, were, they went from negative to positive in a very strong way. The thing that's really causing them grief is something that is across the entire industry. But because of the nature of where their flights are and what they're doing, they've actually gotten pricing through. There's all these really positive things. Those numbers were fine. Now, did they guide lower? Yeah, they guided lower uh, because, of, because of some lack of clarity, gas prices, and a few other things. But I think they're going to be profitable going forward here, which is kind of really dangerous to then short these things because if you, because you've got so many ifs. If the euro continues to be cheap, it should help flights to Europe and the desire to do. And if you get any like improvement on the situation in Europe, it should improve both business and domestic travel. And then you've got, if China reopens, you've got so many ifs that actually help them that this quarter, them being able to be positive, it's really dangerous to keep pressing those shorts too aggressively. But we shall see. Um, I do wanna talk about what's going on macro oil and gas in general though. These are the headlines. So what actually drove oil downwards today was because Nord Stream one, uh, Russia turned it back on to the tune of the same 40% that it was on before. And I think that was like random that they did it in my opinion, because I actually wasn't sure how long they were going to try to drag this out. In fairness, it's not the, you know, I mean, like it's a true heat stroke. So I'm sure there's concessions that none of us really know about, but they turned it back on nonetheless. 
to the tune of about 40%, which is just not going to be enough. So um, Uniper, which is the German utilities company that's desperate for oil and gas right now, um, was very clear that it's only receiving about 40% of the net gas that it did before. This absolutely, as I've been saying, is going to mean that uh, this, along with the fact in general that we're seeing in the CPI, a lack of a appliance buying is going to be a problem for companies like Whirlpool and for the appliance manufacturers in general that have exposure to Europe but really rural pool, okay? But um, so I'm looking for places that are safe uh, depending on how I look at the chart. But if you are long rural pool, you need to hedge it. And if you're looking for shorts, do a, a lot more investigation and see what happens maybe. Um, and we'll take a look at it closer to when they report their quarter. But um, this really is part of the reason why some of the companies are very, um, positive the U.S. More than one company has reported that the U.S. strength is a hard one to actually map out since the majority of the revenues do come from the U.S. Case in point, Dow Chemical, which reported this morning, a lot of people get them confused on what precisely is the split that went from Dow and, the, and DuPont and Corteva, um, the three components of the prior uh, Dow Chemical company. But Dow does create packaging for um, for the appliance industry, and it was really weak this quarter. Um, even though you know, it, it, so so I'm just saying, like it's not this whole European thing. You know, it's just not being read on days when Europe rallies. I would look to buy puts farther out so you can hedge your book and have something a little bit more that, that has a bias downwards for um, for volatile days. Um, additionally, here coal-fired electricity generation surges to record high. German gas rationing would hit metals, chemicals the hardest. So realize that that's one of the few things that's helping out American chemical companies, but most of the big chemical companies are international. Um, and then refiners rake in cash after gas prices surge. Now, here's the thing that I think is crazy. Uh, the refiners got beaten up as much as everything else on this map. And, and so I did take a little bit more exposure to MPC, MPC Valero, and um, and um, Phillips, those are your three S and P names that are in the refinery business. And then one that we have talked about more than once, which is Mr. Icon's company, uh, Icon Enterprises ticker IEP. All of those have massive exposure. I mean, that company, even though it's got a, a whole mess of businesses in it, the biggest revenue component, my, my belief is this quarter will be that refinery business, and that's yielding still a ridiculous dividend yield. So that's an easy one to just keep adding on days that it gets weak, because he's going to report, he's going to tell us all that he made a ton of money, because it's just what it is. And um, the only other thing, you know, they're like, if you look at that portfolio, it should be fine in this environment. But uh, of the three, Valero is the largest cap. It is my least favorite, even though it was the cheapest. Um, MPC is probably got the biggest multiple. I like it, but I prefer at these levels, um, Phillips, PSX, because of its multiple, because it's not really that. I think it actually did a better job last quarter, personally. But between those three, I preference um, Phillips, but maybe everybody else already, already knows that and feels the same way about Phillips. Marathon and Valero, I think, could could whipsaw because it probably has a little less love in it. Um, but nonetheless, I would just mention that. Look, oh my gosh, looks like the EQs have started to really all go the way of Tesla. Wow. All right, let's get through this faster so y'all can get back to trading. Sorry about that. Tesla, these were the numbers and I know it's really controversial, Dave, but if you look at it, the one thing that is a slight negative is this down sequential. So this, was, this is the first down sequential auto sales uh, quarter that he's had. But nonetheless, if you look at top line and bottom line growth on this, I didn't put down the net income, you do see that um, the margins are good as far as that goes. Now, some of it may be that he sold that Bitcoin. And so he's got some, I mean, I think below the line. So if you use adjusted EBITDA, that's what you need to use. Because otherwise, if you look below the line, it looks a little crazy. But nonetheless, that's what's up. The energy gen business is actually um, doing well sequentially. If you look at it down here, energy generation storage continues to go upwards to the tune of about like 60% or so. Is that right? Another, yeah, he made another 200 million on that. So yeah, like 50%, well, 40%. Sorry, my math is terrible today, 40%. And then um, the, um, you know, um, his uh, so enter and then services and other, which is basically just the services business on the cars. 
uh, is going up as well, um, about the same. Is that right? Yeah. So energy, uh, 616. And then on services, it's 1279 to 1466. So, you know, Tesla's business, it's not that bad. I know a lot of people real upset because of the non-sequential. Obviously, they've gotten over it since the, the early parts of this morning. Um, but I'm, you know, if you look across the S&P five, S&P 500 right now and the names that probably need to start taking leadership over other names, I mean, this isn't the worst company to keep go- moving forward with. Um, and you do have really, really juicy margins. So, I mean, look, it's controversial every single time, but I'm certainly not going to come out and be like, I don't agree with this rally. I don't, I don't think it like Tesla's Tesla. It kind of is what it is there. Um, CSX system system. So, you know, I start looking at the train. So CSX and UNP reported this morning, and this is part of the reason why certain things just aren't moving. The fertilizers down 3%. Remember, this is a volume and shipping number. This is not how much did they make on operating margins. As we know, this is down 3% to me is pretty good. Same thing here with fertilizer for, uh, which I think it's here down to the way that I interpret that is that their freight cost didn't go up nearly as much as I would have expected personally, because, um, you know, we already know that they shipped out significantly less fertilizer. And so, and they just charged a whole lot more for it. So I don't see that this is going to really be the end all be all. Instead, I really do want you to look at this coal number up 54% in um, on CSX. Um, that railway is always on the East Coast. I'll put you a little map here so you could see it. So um, it, it goes like this, right? West Virginia, all that thermal coal, okay? And then also you got some, it's all Appalachian coal up in here that is going over to Europe, as I've mentioned more than once uh, <laughs> over the few weeks. UNP here, notice that their um, coal is here, coal and renewables. Now you got renewables that are bringing that number, um, but they are only up 2%. And this is why I always have preferenced console energy to our CEIX to uh, UNP, because UNP is located over here. It's located in your, uh, I believe it's like the, uh, the the Colorado region, right up in here. So this right here is makes it very hard to know if, um, if, if BTU is benefiting in the same manner as Arch, which is located down here, and uh, and um, and Console are are benefiting. Now, in fairness, Arch has got some mines that are down here in Arkansas, but they also really have mines in West Virginia, just like uh, just like um, uh, a Console. But the point, nonetheless, is that I'm a I'm a little bit and and have been for a long time more bullish East Coast coal uh, versus uh, the West Coast coal, but really it's Midwest coal um, or, or mountain mountain coal. <laughs> I don't really know a better way to say it. So I just want to highlight that for you. Other areas of strength is automotive. Like that, you know how many times this thing has been negative in the last two years? It's ridiculous. So we are finally starting to see an uptick on autos, which is a big deal for all of them. You know, this is because if you look where the rail goes, it goes straight. I mean, like this is... Uh, Atlas shrugged if you ever saw anything, right? But uh, automotive right here, 11%. Same thing here, uh, 24%. If I move this little thing back, you can see it goes straight to Michigan and over to the East Coast. Now, this is part of the reason why, even though I hear everybody as relates to their feelings on Tesla, I still got to remind everybody that we're coming out of this massive, massive auto shortage that has been for some time like even into covid we had talked about not we but the 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 nerds of the business so to speak have talked about the fact that there's a shortage of cars and that we've had like the oldest fleet ever Uh, just to remind you a a car even in a rental and in accounting wise it's going to fully depreciate in seven years and at, at the time in 2019 that statistic fleet was already at 15 years old in the united states which meant at least half needed to be replaced. And, you know, we've subsequently had kind of the worst auto auto uh, unit deliveries of all time for almost two years. And we still have issues at the ports. And that supports American cars, American manufacturing over European manufacturing. And now we're about to go into a situation where Europe's not gonna have any energy. So let me see. So, you know, it's really hard to be negative the US autos, even if all these other things with Tesla, the fact is Europe's gonna have a tough time getting those cars over here because they ain't got no power. I've got a better way to say it. So um, that's that's kind of where I fall out on why, despite the valuation, despite what everybody says, Tesla is my one exception to all things uh, in this earth. And with that, 
Yeah, that's all I've got prepared for today. Uh, are there questions? Uh, May, uh, Don't get mad at me, Dave, for the Tesla no, comment. No, 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 not at all. Uh, so you, you listened to the earnings report, correct? Yeah, I did, yeah. What What did you like so much about it? Because with 100 times earnings, the s and at like 16 times earnings. They're at 100 times. I think he's got the growth. That's the thing. I mean, he's grown at 50%. So having a two multiple, um, you know, having a two multiple, uh, two times, you know, being at uh, a multiple uh, that's that's a PE to growth times, a peg rate of, I'm not speaking very well today, I apologize. Um, having a peg of two times in this kind of environment isn't that bad. I mean, the autos market is, um, it, it's, um, it's a problem in the United States. So you've got costs coming down on semiconductors. The one area that is unfortunately still going to be a problem which I almost want to kick myself so hard because I've talked about Albemarle and I all I did was I shorted some puts uh, put spreads uh, to to get long it I should have just bought calls like a normal and, and put the big point boy pants on and just bought calls but he talked about the fact that Al, like companies like that, that do lith lithium or truly as Albemarle basically have a license to print money that's the only major cost issue he's still going to have massive issues with going forward, but the semiconductor piece is going to probably be um, a little bit better for him. And then any slowdown in GDP is going to help um, the steel business for him. So, you know, I actually think that he's got some tailwinds coming, um, depending on any number of potential scenarios uh, that play out here in the future, because the auto's demand, just because GDP declines in the U.S. in particular, because the nature of what's just happened in the last year, we get some structural issues. That's the same thing with the housing um, market as well. And it's part of the reason why I think rental prices won't change, even if you have GDP slowdown. So, um, yeah, that's really how I'm thinking about it. <laughs> okay, so you're lucky at, <coughs> excuse me, uh, price. Um, P to Earth, growth, yeah. Well, which is 100, but they're growing at 50%. So you're yeah. saying two times is two times price to growth, which is the peg ratio, right? Yeah. I mean, technically, I'm using EV to EBITDA to, 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 to growth because if I use the peg, it looks like he's growing 100 times, earnings grew 100 times, but I know there's a mess of stuff between those two lines. So I'm not going to use that number. Instead, I'm just going to use enterprise value to EBITDA to growth. I think that's a little bit more fair. Um, he grew the top line and um, enterprise value to EBITDA about 47, 48%. I, think. I don't, don't, don't quote me on that, but it was something like close, just under 50% is what it was. And so I'm like, you know what, in this kind of environment, something that's grown 50 times, I give it to you. I, I don't know. You know, it's not so much, look, NVIDIA does I'm stuff. Not like that. I'm not arguing yeah. at all. Just oh, no, no, no. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> so he, he sold Bitcoin in a, what, a $500 million loss or something? It looks something like, I mean, I know that they'll probably, there'll be some nerd out on the street that does the actual calculation lot by lot and, and we'll get a really good estimate, but it's got to be something probably under half a billion, but let's just call it a half a billion because it's easier to say it. But yeah. <laughs> a lot of money. So did he, did they throw that? How did they account for that? I mean, look, it's still got to come out, but, uh, you know, we've talked about the fact that that all goes on your tangible assets and you have to write it down anyways as a loss. So if he's got a gain, which he does coming out of this quarter, then it should help him not pay as much taxes. So that's actually not a bad situation relative to a GM or a Ford as far as competitively goes on being able to be a better balance sheet. You know, GM and Ford might have something to say to me specifically about that, because honestly, uh, they got some other businesses that make it not necessarily apples to apples when you look at it. But, you know, I mean, okay. and the, the so GM finance is such a big part of GM. Accounting know. wise, and it's it has to be classified as intangible assets. So yeah, you, you write, keep them on the balance sheet. It's intangible. Remember we went through, right, I, I know right, you made, right, me, right. made me do a double check on that. So, <laughs> so I'll never forget. It was a good, uh, good call. So, he, he, how did he show it as far? So it's just a reduction in capital. Is that what it is? Well, you can, well, he now holds them on his balance sheet as digital assets. So it's really easy to find them before it was getting mixed in with all the un, other intangibles. And then he'd have a bunch of calls and people would freak out. So he split out the digital assets, but according to Ernst and Young, there's like a white paper that you can just Google search these days, because I guess so many of us got it wrong uh, about a year and a half ago when it was first a big issue. But um, yeah, so the intangible assets, you got to write, you got to, you 
got to put them down as um, on the balance sheet that way. And so you got to take the loss um, on them regardless. So like, if you're going to have intangible assets swinging around like crazy, then what you might prefer to do, and, and this is what he gave as the reason he said, he just wanted to be more liquid so that he could navigate uh, the supply chain a little better, especially in China. Now, I mean, I think he just wanted to have, uh, he wanted to go ahead and take the L on the taxes um, and then just actually just make the story cleaner. I think he probably regrets buying it in the first place because it wasn't the right call for his business to be buying Bitcoin, you know? Right. Look, yeah, if you want to accept Bitcoin, that's, as, that's one that's thing, but you outright fine. buying it is crazy. Um, what, I mean, it, and he's got this t Twitter thing going on. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. It's just, yeah, then maybe tes Tesla runs on its own and he doesn't have that much to do with it. No, I think he sleeps in the factory. That's not fair. <laughs> he always talks to the fact that he sleeps in the factory. That's like his favorite thing. Sometimes he'll sleep in the factory the night before an earnings call and he'll mention it on the call, you know, because you remember recently he's been trying to get people to come back into the factory. So he's been doing his special, you know, he's, he's a, a very specific type of leader. So he's like, if I'm in the factory, sleeping in the factory, then other people, you know, that kind of thing. He does some of that from time to time. Yeah. Such to, a special to, human being, to, right? To boost morale. You yeah. too can sleep in the factory. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm sure it's a really nice room that he's got in the factory. <laughs> <laughs> Although he's got, he, he does have a tiny home. I remember there was something I was watching. I mean, he's a character. If, if nothing else, he keeps, you know, he keeps it entertaining in the business areas. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's, yeah. He's very, very intelligent. <laughs> I mean, um, yeah. And we're looking at competition coming from Mercedes, BMW, Range Rover, Ford, GM. I mean, I think that should be a factor. Long I mean, it, it is a factor long term for sure, right? And it's always hard, like how you value today, value in the future, hard to say. A few things there. It, to me, the one thing with Europe is until we get the ports sorted out and until Europe's energy situation gets sorted out, everybody... Every like other auto manufacturer, now I don't do Japan, obviously, and Japan's got issues too, because they're a net importer as well of all the energy complex. You know, we haven't heard much from them, but um, the fact is the one country where we don't have any kind of energy supply issue. I mean, we got inflation, don't get me wrong, but we don't have like no energy. Do you know what I'm saying? Like Europe legitimately has no energy. They're trying to figure out rolling stops to who's gonna, like they're, they're trying to figure out a contingency plan to what happens if they truly run out in the winter, who gets it and who gets prioritized. That stuff hasn't happened since like World War II. Do you know what I'm saying? Like it's been a long time, maybe, maybe it happened in the seventies. I was a little bit, I was too young. I was just born then. But like, there's none of that discussion coming over here in America. The most we're doing is look, we're gonna have blackouts because we got record high temperatures. Now, that's another reason why I think this whole weakness in energy is foolishness. How are you going to actually have rolling blackouts in the Northeast that you're worried about and Bitcoin can't even be mined in Texas, but somehow the energy price is too high? That's nonsensical, in my opinion. But market does what it does. You know, <laughs> I got on a tangent there, didn't I? Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, um, this SENS, that's been a very good, that's a very cheap. Yeah, it's Enceonics, right? Yeah, yeah. SENS. And you can buy the what? Uh, the 150 call, January of 23, 150 call for yeah. 27 cents now. Oh, wow. That's doing really well. I think I bought it lower. Sorry, guys. But, you know, hey, I tell you when I know. <laughs> but, you know, that thing is going to be really volatile. I know at 27 cents, you could care, right? <laughs> like, it's, it's like, you know, well, no, when, you bought it, when you buy it at 13 cents, you've made 100%. Exactly, exactly. But you know, if, if, if people are in permission for options, or if they're just freaked out about the volatility, I would just buy the stock, even if you just bought the stock, it's fine. I mean, um, I will say it again, I've, I've taken a look at the 10k, this company does make money, it is a legitimate company, it has tons of patents, there's a real good reason why people would want to buy them. When I, I did some channel checks, but you know, you can never do enough of these, but most of the people that use it really, really enjoy it. The problems that got to be fixed, really have to do with operations and supply chain. It There's a backlog on how often you can, like, you know, some people have waited six months for this and then some. Um, and then additionally, they don't have enough doctors and that's part of the problem. They don't have enough doctors to implant it. 
So th that's what's going on is that it's a diabetic implant. So it goes under the arm. And then <laughs> apparently some doctors uh, were not trained in, were trained in some way. So they put it in the same arm each time. And so that didn't allow for the scar to heal. And there were some little issues there, but that's all resolved itself. Uh, additionally, you used to have to implant it in every three months and they were having supply chain issues. Um, but the newer the chips, you know, this is the chip shortage hurts them because it ultimately what's tracking you, that sensor, you might as well translate every time you hear sensor the, to the word semiconductor. So I think that they're probably in, I mean, I think if we can get some alleviation on the semiconductor shortage, that should help them. The semi-business movement onshore should help them. Um, if we can get just a little bit of a better labor environment where we can get some more people trained to actually do these procedures, Originally, it was doctors. Now it's going to be um, physicians' assistants that can do it. They're trying to train up, you know, the, the physician assistants. And let's face it, a lot of a lot of people now go to a physician assistant instead of a doctor for for the simple stuff. Um, but anyways, all of that stuff will help them. It's just speed of execution and whether or not it actually gets done. And that's always something you got to watch for quarter by quarter. But take out candidate. If you know, I think if the, if they screw it up this quarter, they're going to be so cheap that they become a viable takeout candidate because they got a real product. Yeah, Amazon just bought somebody, some a, a healthcare company today. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, you're right. It could be from anyone that wants anything from actually the diabetes business, which by the way, Abbott reported, like I said yesterday, really well on that diabetes business. That and cardio were the two businesses that were doing great. And then you're right, it, because more than one company has said that medical sensors is something they care about, there'd be real, there'd be a host of buyers. I hadn't even thought about that. Thank you for sharing that. You're welcome. Okay, me. Thank you. All right, cool. Bye. Good luck, guys. Bye.